Banjo Cat, Between Two Ranges, Season 2. Banjo Cat, here for Episode 7, Season 2 of Between Two Ranges. My guest today is documentary filmmaker and retired Forest Service Public Affairs Officer, Marsha Hogan. Hi, Banjo Cat. How you doing? Marsha, thank you for being here. I hear you used to work for the Forest Service. I love Smokey the Bear. He's great. We go way back. What's up with Smokey's wardrobe? I invited him to lunch, and he showed up in jeans and a hat and the waiter wouldn't serve us. No shirt, no shoes means no food for Smokey Bear and Banjo Cat. Well, Smokey the Bear, Banjo Cat, is very sorry, and I have brought you a Frisbee from Smokey to say, please take me to lunch again one day. Marsha, I've asked you here today to tell folks at home about using the Katie Swan photographs from the UM archives in your documentary. So can you do that? Yes, Banjo Cat, I can do that. Along with Libby Langston, I co-produced a documentary about how the National Forest came to be. We used the life and photographs of Katie Swan to tell that story. Katie Swan came to Nyhart, Montana in 1911 as a young forester, and part of his job was taking photographs. The National Forests were only five, six years old, and people were really not sure about what their purpose was. So for the next 37 years, Katie Swan takes pictures to inform people about the National Forest. He lugs this big box camera into the woods, into remote places that are really inaccessible to most people. And he shows people what beautiful landscapes we have. And people fall in love with the National Forest. We did the same. We used Katie Swan's visual images from the Forest Service archives as well as the UM archives to tell the forest, to tell the story of the early days of the National Forest. Without these photographs, we would have been, um, we would have had a documentary, we would have had a story that would have been a lot more boring, that would have just been talking heads, people telling the story, but it wouldn't have been reinforced or um, as visually interesting without photographs. There are many photograph collections here at the University of Montana. The Sherburn Collection, which is photographs from around Browning on the Rocky Mountain Front. The Lord Family Collection of historic photographs down in the Bitterroot Valley. And all these photographs bear witness to the past. They evoke this sense of place and time that is hard to do um, without them. It's not unlike Facebook, where it's so much easier to tell people what you're doing with a photograph. Wow, I sure learned a lot. Well, that's all we have time for. Thank you for joining us for the first half of Season 2 of Between Two Ranges. Tune back in December for a special Banjo Cat Holiday Extravaganza episode.